A federal judge in an 86-page decision ruled today that a lawsuit by several plaintiffs raises serious questions about quotas, racial profiling, and constitutional rights. Between 2002 and 2006, the number of stop and frisks in the city of New York went up by 500%. Automatically, the first thing people are always going to say is when they stop for us, what did I do? And it's typically nothing. This gang, this gang is known as, is known as the New York Pigs Department. The New York Pigs Department. Police Department, eyes open, palms up. They understand what's going on. They've seen the data. They know from our analyses and from lots of other analyses that it's not really all about crime. There's something more than crime. We suspect that it's race. So there may be some friction there, because we have young cops, inexperienced cops, and maybe they are stopping some of the wrong people, innocent people. Um, I would be interested to see the guys that claim that they're innocent, if they actually are. And I feel as though it's come to a point where we're being patrolled as opposed to being protected. Like they want us to stay confined in our homes. No, I never imagined that I would be in a situation where one of my children was being harassed um, on several occasions from the police. I'm supposed to, we're supposed to live with this fear every single day? Every single day we go outside? Every single day? It's crazy. The fact of going through all that, being thrown up against a wall like in, in front of your building or being thrown up against a wall anywhere in front of people, that's when I lost respect for them. That's, that's when I lost respect for them. I was a freshman in high school. I'm not gonna keep searching people for no reason. I'm not gonna keep writing people for no reason. I'm tired of this. Uh, my name is France Jerome. I'm from the Bronx, New York. I am an after-school program coordinator uh, with Inwood House, and I also do volunteer work at the Brotherhood Sister Soul. My name is Aisha Jordan. I'm originally from Amherst, Massachusetts, and I'm married to France Jerome. How long have you been married? Um, just a few months, actually. Got married in August 2010. Yeah, six months. <laughs> So one of the more recent times that I've been stopped and frisked is about 11.30 at night. Uh, I, I have a collective of writers called the Peace Poets, and we were writing workshops to do at Newcomers High School um, in Brooklyn. And it was a late session, got a lot of work done. I came outside, I texted my wife, like, you know, I'm on my way home. I took a few steps in an unmarked van, stopped and pulled up in this area. I got to the corner of 194th and Valentine Avenue. Two officers jumped out. After they pulled the van up onto the curb, uh, hopped out and asked me, it was like, stop right there. Asked me a whole bunch of questions. Had me take my stuff out of my bag. Cracked some particularly interesting jokes about the clothes I was wearing. I have a Sesame Street track jacket that I love, and the proceeds go to the show. And 
that that was the thing to come back to to for them to laugh and um, I didn't find it particularly funny and had me up against the wall here with my hands up against the wall continuing to ask random questions they asked me to take out to open my bag uh, my laptop some notebooks uh, some video games and asked me if I had a weapon it's the most dominated you could really feel standing on two feet is having your hands on the wall uh, having somebody patting you up and down another person surveilling and watching it and documenting it i felt really indignant about being stopped and first perhaps it was because i had just left an education writer's circle i was like well, i'm doing the work to unravel the damage that their work does You need a reasonable suspicion that a crime is about to be committed. So it's, you have a common law right to, of inquiry. I, I see you in a location. I think something's going on, you know, whatever it may be. If it's robbery or burglary or criminal possession of a weapon, that would be almost a, well, it would be an automatic frisk situation just because of the uh, inherent danger in those crimes. Uh, and the frisk is not a search. It's a pat down for a weapon, basically, just to protect myself as the officer, or the public from you know, harm. The cops are going to make stops, probably, of those guys hanging out in the lobby. It has nothing to do with race. It has nothing to do with racial profiling. It's based on a citizen's request for police response. But every single one of those stops, if they are of blacks, is going to be tallied against the cops by the Center for Constitutional Rights in its annual check of stops against population data. I want to say something about what communities want, because it's very simple to say communities want violent crime to end, because of course they do. Of course they do. But when you talk to people who live in these communities, you get a much more nuanced request. No community is saying, send your police in here and start arresting all of our young people. No community is saying that, you know? So that's a specious argument. The, the people who live in these communities say, we want to be safe, but we want our young people to have a chance to make it. We want you to, when we did our interviews in Tallahassee, for example, we got this sort of uniform, ironic response. People would say, uh, arrest the bad guys, but leave my brother and uncle alone. I think it, it is simply wrong to say they're asking for more of, what, of the same of what we're getting. No, no, they're not. They are actually offended by it as a community. Now, there are individuals in there who would like more, and if you want to give them a voice, they will speak up in public meetings. But there are also individuals in there who can say very forthrightly and very eloquently how damaging this strategy has been for the community infrastructure. I mean, we're, talk we're talking plenty of times I mean I, I lost count you know? like, it becomes a, it becomes one big blur like yeah. to, I, I couldn't I, honestly I couldn't even individually tell you every single time that's happened since I was 15 years old 14 years old I you know it's it's and it becomes so routine that a lot of the times that that I get stopped or I know it's the same thing for you that, that we get stopped or people like us get stopped you know we don't say anything about it because it's something it's a, we expect I think there needs to be more training with our police officers and how they deal with young people and young people of color and um, you know uh, I think it's a very insular society and it's becoming um, like when you're part of a particular organization or a group maybe there needs to be ongoing training I hate to use the word sensitivity training but maybe that's what it is as long as there's crime you know, there's going to be damage. Now, if you think about collateral damage in a police stop, which means uh, an inconvenience, versus the damage of crime and crime victimization, you know, that's not free either. There, there, there is, uh, there is um, untold um, damage to communities, some with lifelong implications. You know, if we can take it back to, you know, the Auerlich family, the cost is, is, is great. Uh, it's, it creates fear. It creates anxiety. Uh, it creates um, 
a sense of, of loss, um, and, and that's an all too real experience for us uh, that we, we live with on a regular basis. Yeah. Uh, the phone ringing, uh, you know, Mary Beth not being able to answer, being afraid of something, mm -hmm. and the something is, you know, David's been stopped, and we've got to go yeah. to the precinct and 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 help rescue our son. So that's you know that's something that that's a that's a cost, and that's a I think it's a pretty expensive cost. That you know uh, you know I'm in business. I like to get compensated. <laughs> There's no compensation for this cost, right? So um, so if we we took it back here, you know I don't see it as a small thing. So, you know. Uh, in the in the context of it's a, we're giving up something small for the greater good of society, you know I, I don't I don't I don't buy that.